Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the basis of the counting methods, the principle of addition and the principle of multiplication. Let's start with an example. Imagine that you are a pirate and you have a treasure and you want to hide it. You live on this island and you are aware of two neighboring islands, A1 and A2, with good hiding spots. A1 has two good hiding spots and A A2 has three. Now you have to make a choice. You either choose to hide on A1, there's two possibilities, or you can hide on A2 and there is three possibilities. So how many choices, how many distinct choices can you make? Just from the picture, there is five. But let's, let's look into this in more detail. If you choose to hide in A1, let's call this choice C1. C1 can be realized in either this way or this way. Uh, so C1, the size of C1 must be two. The choice C2 can be realized in three ways. And so the size of C2 is three. Now, these are all good hiding spots. So it doesn't matter which, which choice you make. So, if you have how many possibilities there are. So the, if you call it C, just make a choice. The size of C must be the sum of C1 plus C2, okay? Which is two <coughs> plus three. So this analysis is focused on the choices, how many choices there are. Now let's focus on the outcomes of the choices. How many hiding spots there are on I island I1 or in other words, the set I1, there is two adding spots. On A2, there is three. So, if you now make the reunion, the reunion of the two sets, you join all the, all the, the sets, uh, the, 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 the elements of the two sets, you have a new set, which is called A1, reunion with A2, which contains all the possible outcomes, and the size of this thing is the sum of A1 plus A2, which is again 2 plus 3. It's the same number. You see? The choices and the outcomes. Why does it happen? You see? It's obvious from the example, but let's just think about it. You see? Because every time you make a choice, it leads to a result, an outcome. That means that th there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the choices and the outcomes. That entails that if you compute how many choices that you have, you are computing how many outcomes that you have. And that, or in other words, the size of the set. You see? This is a very important idea, because it means that you can compute the sizes of sets by computing how many choices that you have. And that means here, in this case, that the size of C, the choices that you have, is the same as the size of this set. Okay? Let's make a, a, a different diagram. A different diagram, a more abstract diagram for this thing. You see? Uh, a more u uh, useful. You see? The choices C1, let's make a tree diagram, can be represented by these two branches. And the choices in uh, C2 by three branches. You see, how many branches that you see is five. Each one leads to a result. Either this result, or this result, or this result, or this result, or this result. The, si the set that you have here, it's A1, reunion with A2. Okay? This is C1, this, this first part, this is C2. Now notice, these branches represent all the possible realizations of C. Here are all the possible outcomes that result from your choices. The set A1 reunion with A2. There are as many branches as there are elements in this set. Why? Because there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two. So you have, if you want to count how many elements you have here, you, have to, you can count how many choices you have here. 
Okay, now let's make this m more general. You see, and call it the principle, the addition, add principle, addition principle. Is it's as follows. Imagine that you have a choice C, which says the following: realize either C1, a choice C1, which has n1 possibilities, or C2, which has n2 possibilities, or etc., up to Ck, which has nk possibilities. Okay, k is an int integer number; it could be 100. Okay. Now, if you have this C and you have you have to realize one of these choices, then you can say the following: the size of C, how many possibilities there are, is the sum C1 plus the size the sum of, uh, of the size of C2, etc., up to Ck. Or, in other words, N1 plus N2, etc., plus Nk. Now, this is the addition principle focus on the choices here. Now, let's reformulate this principle in terms of the set. I have to erase this and put it here. If you have a set A1, which comes as a result of the, the choices of C1, or A2, or etc., up to AK, these sets are disjoint, meaning there is no common element. The size of A1 is N1, the size of A2 is N2, etc., up to AK. Then the addition principle says that if you make the reunion you make the reunion, you join all the disjoint, disjoint sets into A1, A2, up to AK. Then the size of this thing is again N1 plus N2 up to NK. Okay? Very important principle. Okay? Of course, this number is the same as this number because there is a one to one correspondence between C and the choices. Okay? Now, let's move on to the multiplication principle and give another example. We have three islands this time. We have three islands. Here they are. This is connected by three bridges and these two are connected by two bridges. This, let's call this A1 and let's call this A2. You live here, okay? And on this island lives Eve. Eve lives here. You want to meet Eve, so you have to make a travel. You have to travel. So there is cho uh, choices you have to make. You have to choose the bridges that you have to cross. Um, let's call this choice, choosing among these three, C1 and this C2. What's the size of C1? Well, C1 can be realized in three ways in practice. So, the size of C1 is 3. The size of C2 is 2. Okay? Now, how many choices do we have to make to travel here? Okay, let's analyze the picture. You see, if you make the take this bridge, there is two possibilities. If you take this bridge, there is two possibilities, and if you take this one, there is again two. So that tells you that tells you that the C, meaning make a choice from year to year, the size of this thing must be three times two, or C one times C two. Two. Uh, three times two. Okay. This is good. Now. <coughs> Let's focus on the outcomes. This is focus on the choices, let's focus on the outcomes. The outcomes, well, if you take bridge one, you'll end at a place A. a. If you take the second bridge, you, you, you will end at B, or the, the third bridge, at C. These two lead to the site one or the site two. Now, that means that if you, if you choose C1, you have get one, the outcome is one of these results, A, a B, or C. If you choose uh, the C2 leads to 1 or 2. Now, 
because you are making these choices in sequence, you, you first have to get a letter and then a number. So the outcome of the sequence C1 then C2 is what we call an order pair. I'm, I'm going to write it here. For example, if you could be, it could be A1, A, and 1. See, I mean, you choose this bridge and it is 1, so it leads to this result. So choosing the C leads to this result. Or C could be A2. Or it could be B, B and then 1, or B and 2, or C and 1, or C and 2. So this is a set. You have here a set. Okay? The set of outcomes of choosing C1 and then, and then C2. Okay? What's the size of this set? The size of this set is the, the product. The size will be the size of A1 times the size of A2. Can you see? Okay? Now, what's, what, what do we, what's called this set? This set is called, I don't, I don't know if you know it, but it's the Cartesian product. This is the Cartesian product, A1 cross A2. You see? Can you see? Uh, if you're not aware of the, what the Cartesian product is, I'm going to give you a definition. It means, let me, well, yeah. let me put it uh, here. Well, let's stay here. So it, it's x and y such that x belongs to a1 and y belongs to a2. You see? This is a formal way of writing the Cartesian product, but this is, if this is difficult, let's make a picture. A picture is easier. A picture you will draw on the horizontal axis the elements of the first set. A, B, and C. On the horizontal axis, you draw 1 and 2. Now, every time you make a choice, you get uh, an ordered pair. That means that you get a point. These, each of these points represent an outcome of the choices C1 and then C2, or, in other words, an element of this set. Okay? So, this has all the possibilities. Now, the product A1 times A2 means that you are multiplying the, quote unquote, the size of the basis times the size of the height. You see, it's almost calculate. You see, you are calculating the points. It's like you are, it's like calculating the area. You see, the, of the rectangle. So, the size of the basis and the size of the height, the, like an area. And this area is the size of a1 Cartesian product with a2, okay? Which is again 3 times 2. Again, re remember, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between C and the elements of uh, a1 uh, Cartesian product with a2. Let's make a picture to see this, a diagram, you see? The, first, the choices of C1 are branches. One, two, and three. The all the possible realizations of C1. Then you have to realize C2. So let's make another branch. There is two possibilities. There is two possibilities. And there is two possibilities. Each one leads to a result. Either A1, A and 1, etc. Up to C and 2. Like here. You see? This set... It's here. This is A1, Cartesian product with A2. Okay? This is C1, C2. How many branches are there? Well, it's C1 times C2. C1 here, in blue, and C2 here, these two. Okay? How many elements there are in here? It's the size of A1, Cartesian uh, times A2. Okay? And they are the same. These numbers are the same because, again, there is a one correspondence between branches and outcomes. Okay? Now, again, let's make this general and state the multiplication principle. So let's put it here. Uh, multiplication principle. 
it runs as follows. Imagine that you have C is realize C1, which can be realized in N1 ways, you realize C1, and then you realize C2, and C2, which can be made into N2 ways, up to uh, and NK. Uh, I'm sorry, and, and CK, CK, which can be realized in NK ways. Okay? Okay, under these circumstances, then the size of C is a product, is N1 times N2 up to NK. Okay, can you see? This again is a multiplication principle. Focus on the branches. Let's make the analog. Focus on the outcomes, the sets. Well, if you have the set A1 and A2, etc., up to AK, this has si size N N1, N2, NK. Now, if you make the Cartesian product of A1, A2, etc., up to AK, then the size of this thing is again the product of N1, N2, up to NK. Okay? So this is at two points of view, the choices and the outcomes. Okay? Now, let's use now these two principles in the final example. A, bit, a little bit more dramatic example, this one. We have an archipelago of five islands. Is one island, two, and three. Another one, and another one. This is connected by two bridges, and is connected by three. This is connected by three, but th this one is just connected by one. Okay? Let's call this C1, C2, C3, and C4. This is A1, A2, uh, I'm sorry, A2, A3, and A4. You live here, and you get a warning sign that the volcano here is about to explode. So, you have to run away. You either can go to A3 or to A4. And now, how many, how many choices can you make? Okay? How many choices can you make? Let's use now our principles. So, this column. Because we are focused on the choices. If you want to go to A3, then you have to make a choice C1 and you have to make a choice C3. You have to make a choice C1 and another choice. Okay, can you see? So, how many choices there are to go from here to A3? Well, you use the multiplication principle, because you have the word AND. You have to make first C1 and then C3. So, the principle says that if you want to go to here to here, how many choices there are? Well, it's just the size of C1 times the size of uh, C3. Or in other words, N1 times N3. If you, on the other hand, want to go to A4, you have to make a choice C2, and you have to make a choice C4. Use again the multiplication principle, which says that then how many choices there are? There are the size of C2 times the size of C4, which is, in other words, N2 times N4. Uh, let's put the numbers. So N1 is 2, N3 is 3, N2 is 3, and N4 is just one. You have only possibility. So, now, because it doesn't matter whether you go here or here, notice the word here or here, you, are, you can use the addition principle. You have either C1, C1, uh, let's call it uh, C, uh, go, go here, upstairs, or C, or C2, let's call it C downstairs. So you have here C upstairs or downstairs. So the principle says, that, well, if you have the, the po you can, it doesn't matter either one or the other, so you sum. That means in practice that you sum here. Okay? These possibilities with these ones. So you sum here. This with this. Okay? This is 
Let's call the size of C. Okay? Is okay? Now let's focus on this part. On this part. Set a one, a two, a three, uh, a three, uh, and a four are all disjoint. Okay? They are all disjoint. So we can use this. You can. We can use this already. So let's let's look at uh, the multiplication, uh, the v this multiplication principle. Well, if you go to a three, you have to make choices c1 and c3, meaning that you have an ordered pair. You see, from here and here. Okay? Can you see? Uh, if I call this a, b, c, d, and e, and one, two, three, and four, well, it could be a one or a two or a three or with the same B, so we can use this principle, you see, so it's uh, A1, Cartesian product with A3, it's A1 times A3, okay, which is N1 times N3, you can see what just like here, okay, however, if you go here, the, your choices will lead to this result and to this result. So we use the, the, the again the Cartesian product. So it's a two Cartesian product with a three with a four. Sorry, which is the size of a two times the size of a four, which is n two times n four. Okay. However, because it doesn't matter which one we go, we, we choose. Well, you can now make the reunion, the reunion of these ordered pairs. You make the reunion. Can you see? I'm not. I'm not sure if you can see. You make the reunion because, in practice, it could be a one, a and one, or b and one, etc. But it could also be c and four, or e and four, etc. So you join all these ordered pairs. You join all the ordered pairs. But that means that the final s set is given by uh, a one Cartesian with a three reunion with a two Cartesian with a four, and the size of this thing is the sum here. Can you see? Let's make a picture to make this even more clear. I'm gonna have to erase this to make the picture. A tree diagram will make this evident. A tree, dra tree diagram. These two choices, C1, are here. The other three, and two and three, are here. Now, each one has three possibilities. One, two, three, one, two, three. And these ones only have one possibility. These, each one of these realizations of the choice C leads to a result. This is A and 1 because the first branch leads to, I'm sorry, leads to A and the second branch leads to 1, so this is A1. The second one would be A and 2, so it's A and 2. Can you see? This is 3, so it leads to A and 3, okay? And so on. This is the B1. I'm not going to write it. And finally, we have uh, C, D, and E, all with 4. So I the last one leads to E and 4. This is uh, it's E uh, and 4, D, I'm sorry, D and 4, etc. So. This set here is all the set of outcomes of your choices. So it's A1, Cartesian with A3, Reunion with A2, Cartesian with A4. Okay? It's in this entire set. Let's put here like this. Now, again, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the re re realizations of your choices in the elements of this set, so the both are the same size, just like we see here, C and this part. This is the same thing. Okay? Okay. So, this is the final idea. You, you count how many branches, so it's 2 times 3, 
and then 3 times 1. Okay? And that's how we, we are going to use these both these principles. Okay. That's all for now. Uh, next time you are going to see permutations and combinations. But you see, in the description you have the notes uh, and you also can ask questions. And I wish you good work and until next time. Goodbye.